All right, hello everyone. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying these videos as much as I'm enjoying putting them together. Uh, today, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about a quick little trip I had in Fort Sam because I wanted to touch on that before I jump into uh, my Berlin stay that I was there for about six nights. So just to start off, uh, obviously I came back to Fort Sam after I was in Bielefeld and uh, basically the big thing that we did when I came back is we went caravanning or I guess uh, the Canadian or North American term of that would be camping. Uh, so we took uh, my relatives trailer from their yard and brought it uh, down towards the Rhine River and we did a big uh, canoeing trip uh, on one of the days which I was just absolutely it was amazing just kind of cruising through the the or I guess the man-made uh, rivers that were kind of just off the side of the Rhine uh, that were used for canoeing and kayaking and such um, and it was a really cool time of year with the water was just flowing really pleasantly. It wasn't really anything that too aggressive. And I was in a uh, canoe with uh, Nicholas and one of his friends. Uh, so it was me, the Canadian, who's supposed to know how to canoe, and uh, these two little boys. And there was like rapid section coming and I was told to paddle and I knew in my head, paddle, paddle, paddle. Uh, so we were entering into this section of, and in, in the canoeing trip, under this bridge in the rapids. and. I'm telling the boys like paddle 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 and they literally just like hands up oars above their heads screaming top of their lungs uh didn't paddle at all and so we go through the this rapid section under the bridge end up veering to the left hitting the side of the river which then pushes us back now we're perpendicular to the water and our boat canoe flips uh my head immediately goes up to my glasses and so I'm holding this and I'm trying to figure out where the canoe is and I see the canoes like coming at me. So I unleash my second hand to get the canoe and vamanos, there goes a, a pair of glasses for Mitchell. So from that point forward, I didn't have any more glasses and I had to I actually end up buying contacts in, uh, in Berlin or sorry, in, in Zagreb in Croatia. So that's kind of what happened. It was a great weekend I spent with them. Uh, doing some camping, a very easy setup and everything. I've never really been RV camping in that style, um, but it was great. I really enjoyed all of the time I spent with them there. And then, uh, and then it was time to say goodbye and uh, head off to Berlin. So I thought for Berlin, I would try and just read a little bit quicker through some of the things that uh, I did because there were so many activities that went on uh, in Berlin. So the first, the, I guess the six nights I spent in Berlin, I originally was going over there to attend an artificial general intelligence or artificial intelligence conference. Uh, that it's an annual thing that's held every year uh, all around the world with top scientists and coders and data scientists and to go and check out uh, what the latest and greatest improvements are on artificial intelligence from a scientific and mathematical point of view. Uh, it's something that I was reading a lot of books at but at the time and I'm still very interested in and was very interested in back then. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to secure any tickets. I bought my plane ticket one day. The next day I was going to buy my ticket. I should have done it the other way around because the tickets uh, to the conference got sold out. But um, I still ended up having an amazing six days in Berlin uh, while I was there. Six nights, actually. It was it was quite crazy. So I think the, basically from day one, I got there and within minutes, I met a girl, Courtney, uh, who was traveling solo and meeting up with her boyfriend later on in her trip uh, in Italy. And we went out for dinner and just kind of got to know each other and decided that we should go to the Brennenberg Gates and do the famous uh, walking tour that started in Berlin um, way back in the day. Free walking tour tips, kind of free walking tour, but you tip the guy what he um, deserves at the end of the day. So we had an old history professor from England tourists around Berlin and that was a great chance to see just kind of how much culture there was in Berlin and all the things that had gone down in Berlin in the last century, two centuries. Um, the tour didn't just cover obviously World War II um, but also went all the way back to the, the Enlightenment days. So we saw everything from the Jewish memorial to the book burning sites uh, to the French and German uh, theaters that were created in the center uh, square back in the enlightenment days which made germany a very diverse um city starting at a very young 
age. I think uh, that's something that a lot of people don't know is that Berlin actually has had diversity and acceptance in the West for a long time. Uh, that's generally overlooked. I think uh, by most people like myself, I did not actually know about that. So after going through the Brandenburg Gates and seeing kind of that entire day of walking tour, uh, we ended up walking all the way over to the East Side Gallery, uh, which is a part, a section of the wall where they painted a whole bunch of murals on it. Um, and I've got a whole bunch of photos, so I'm sure I'll post some of those. You'll see them up there. Uh, and that was really in inspiring and interesting to see just how like creative and and how deep some of these messages of these boards were hitting uh, from the east side that they've kind of portrayed now uh, in modern day. Um, other than that, uh, the next day we went uh, to the Typography of Terra, which was a museum that they were putting on for free near a section of the wall where it just went through the entire process of how the Nazi regime was created and the how it was executed and all of the secrecy that went around it and how little the Germans really knew um, when it was all going down and happening and it was just really eye-opening to see kind of how this mass scale event went so unnoticed and was so well planned and executed obviously it was a terrible tragedy but I mean just to see the scale of something like that being planned and executed behind the scenes in a huge government uh, such as Germany back then it's really it was quite shocking um, I think and then after the typography museum I actually had a chance I broke off from the group Courtney and Kevin to the travelers that I had met and uh, I went to the communications museum uh, which for me was just fantastic I'm a communications student uh, kind of I'm a minoring business I'm a communications minor so I studied media and policy and the development of technology and how communication has evolved and I've been reading lots of books on it um, at that point as well I was reading books on communication as well as artificial intelligence and so I had a chance to go to this communication museum and it tracked everything back from you know the African beating drums all the way to mail post services and carriages um, and continuing all the way to the cell phone and the modern day internet and kind of just the whole museum was laid out brilliantly. We just, you just walked up in spirals from floor to floor and really got a chance to understand how communication has developed uh, over the last couple hundred years and why communication plays such a vital role in how we communicate and why we are the dominant species on the planet. Um, I personally believe it's because of the ability to communicate and share information, which puts us way ahead um, of other species um, on this planet. So I think that was a really cool, really cool uh, experience and learning about how the African drums, they would used to drum near the river because the river's wind and sound would travel downwind and down the river so it would be able to get a farther distance and that you know they've been using sound as a communication tool for a long time. Um, and the next morning uh, I woke, woke up, I had a chance to uh, Skype with my mom and my sister, which was pretty cool, and because uh, I hadn't really had much chance uh, to Skype with any of my family while I was busy buzzing around. And then I went on a second tour with the same company that did the free walking tour. I went on their paid tour to Potsdam, and Potsdam was an area just outside of Berlin where the royal uh, families lived back before Germany <coughs> was Germany, and there was a whole bunch of different kind of sub nations and lots of wars going on in the 1700s and 1800s I believe it was um, or it was back further I, I couldn't tell you exactly what it was um, so I'm just gonna read kind of uh, 1500s to present sorry so I will uh, continue I'll just read here Potsdam the royal town of the German royal family through the 1950s to the present this is where Sans Sushi is and all the Frederick Kings live it told the unique story of how Germans Prussia, so this is back when Germany was Prussia, became one of the greatest European powers against all odds and was one of the first countries to show acceptance of all individuals after the Enlightenment. After the six hour tour, I came home, made dinner, drank a bunch of delicious German beer and prepared to go out with everyone to the Matrix, a fairly popular club that night uh, in Berlin. So that was a long day for me because I did a whole walking tour and then I remember we went out. 
uh, and I had to experience the, the Berlin night scene. So it's like, oh, came home at like six, took an hour or two nap, had dinner at like 10, 10 I think, and left at around midnight uh, and went out to one of the most popular clubs in Berlin. And it was an absolute riot. Uh, had a ton of fun. And would I do it again? I don't know. But I definitely got a chance to see, you know, how the Berlin's club music dance. Like, you know, all all up in here. All tight. Nothing. No flaring arms or anything. Everyone's very macho and chill in the club. Uh, and basically, the following day, what I did is I booked the rest of my trip uh, in Europe. Because uh, from there, I had a, about a 10-day break before I would uh, land in Split to start with the Yacht Week as a media intern. So uh, next stop on my trip was, I guess, a layover in Munich and a long stay in Zagreb just to kind of mellow down and chill and really reflect on how everything was going. And Zagreb had some things going on in it, but there wasn't a ton going on in the capital of Croatia. So I decided to spend a few days there. And I'll tell you guys more about that uh, on the next uh, speech so i hope you guys are really enjoying these stories i'm telling you guys and you guys are enjoying the website i'm really enjoying putting these all together and don't forget to subscribe to me on youtube if you guys are making it all the way through these videos you guys have a great day bye bye